in the lane, 15, 10, touchdown, Chargers! What's up, guys? Welcome into a brand new episode of Chargers Weekly, post-Super Bowl edition. As always, joined by Matt Money-Smith, friend of the show, Jeff Miller, LA Times, joining us, Money. We always love having Jeff on. Uh, we get Mr. Miata on here. I'm all about it, man. Especially to Mr. break down Miata. a Super Bowl. <laughs> Especially to break down a Super Bowl. I'm exactly. just glad that somebody considers me a friend. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, you hey, are a friend. Mr. Mr. Miata. We all need a Mr. Miata <laughs> friend, you know? Cruising the uh, the streets of Huntington Beach in a sweet red Miata with oh, a drop yes. top. That's what we are all about, <laughs> Miller. Yes, indeed. Nothing says old man Everybody like was that. missing that. Right. Everybody was missing that Miata in Huntington Beach last week because Jeff was in Arizona all week. Before we get to the game, you got to tell us about the week and, and what you did. Uh, I tried to stay warm. It was weird, you know. Uh, it's that Arizona winter. So uh, one, I ran into somebody uh, who I met, a writer from the New York Times, and he was asking me. Uh, he ne- he had never been to Arizona before, and he said, "I never knew that 65 degrees could be so cold." And that, that's really, it was a weird week that way. It was very dry and very uh, windy, so it was a, uh, a weird week that way. But it was it was good. You know, it's a Super Bowl, so it, uh, uh, as we were talking about just a little bit off the air there, that it uh, it gets a little, uh, by, the, by the end of the week, you're ready for a game. Uh, it's not just the players. So uh, it, it was good. Uh, it was a good week and productive week, but it was great to get to that game. And then it turned out to be a really good game, too. So good good trip all in all. Yeah. A great game, and and now that the Chiefs have have had their parade and uh, the Charger fans' gag reflexes have maybe finally relaxed after uh, (laughs) watching the way this whole postseason played out, the regular season played out, you know, before we just dig into the game, Jeff, I think it's, you know, probably more important for the sake of this podcast and the people listening to it, kind of what, you know, what what the long-term, I don't know if ramifications is the right word, but but what it means long-term for the Chiefs, for the AFC West, for the AFC, for the league that, you know, it looks like a pretty young team won a freaking Super Bowl and they're second in a few years. Yeah, I think we, uh, the reality of it is, I think everybody right now is of the opinion, you know, Mahomes is going to probably win two, three more at, at least, right? And he could be doing this for quite a while. He's still, what, 27 only. So, uh yeah, it's, uh, you know, I guess I was thinking about this the other day. If, if you're a Charger fan or if you're the Chargers, you're going to have to beat the Chiefs eventually, you know, even if you're in the other conference, probably. So, unfortunately, they, you know, they're, they got to play them twice a year and uh, they, they kind of own the division right now. But, you know, you're going to have to beat them anyway. So, I guess if you want to look at it from that perspective, you can't really avoid them. Um, and, and they really can't. But it, yeah, this, the Chiefs, they they look really good, and Andy Reid doesn't sound like he's going anywhere anytime soon. So yeah, they're they're going to be a problem for the rest of the league for a while. It looks like. Jeff, I, I look at how they won the game, and obviously it starts with Mahomes, but just some of the young guys that they've they've recently drafted or acquired. Right, you know, Bolton gets that that uh, scoop and score for a touchdown. Kadarius Tony had one of the or two of the big biggest plays of the game that that punt return and the touchdown. Uh, Pacheco, they really leaned on him. Um, the fact that this team is young and they relied on a lot of rookies and they have the ability to kind of reload, I think, offensively in terms of the wide receiver position, um, I guess what what lessons can the Chargers take from this season and, and just what the Chiefs are doing and how to beat them? They're, the Chargers are always so close to beating the Chiefs. It always comes down to like a three-point game or a one-position game. Yet they can't get over the hump, and it looks like the Chiefs aren't going away. Yeah, I heard after the game uh, the next day, I think someone on the NFL Network said the Chiefs had 24 new players uh, from last season. And we all know, remember when Tyreek Hill uh, left, we all thought, oh, boy, the Chiefs just came back to the pack. And I think it just comes down to really – they they have a really special quarterback, and it it just makes such a big difference. And – it's almost like it doesn't really matter. All his weapons are going to be better because of Patrick Mahomes. And you look at, you mentioned the young guys, Pacheco, Isaiah Pacheco, 21 running backs were drafted before him. Uh, it seems remarkable when you watch that, watch him play this season and watch that game and how hard he runs and how fast he is. How is it even possible? And, you know, guys at Rutgers, I, 
it's hmm. it's bizarre to me. I don't know how that works. The Chiefs seem to find these guys and they they show up there. And it, it, part of it, I think, is a scheme. Part of it's Andy Reid, you know, and Eric Bieniemy that offense. And I think a big part of it though is just it's just Mahomes, and he just he changes the dynamic of the whole the whole game when he's out there. And even you saw him, he's limping around, and he still is just. He's just a unique weapon, and there just aren't, you know, there haven't, I don't know if there's ever been anybody like him in the NFL, and I don't want to turn this into, like, the guy, you know, is, is like Jesus out there running around, but it it really, it, it, there's, he just, he just changes everything, and everybody around him is better because of him, and um, it, it's just, it, he's, he's the riddle that everybody's got to try to figure out for a, a bunch of more years, it looks like. Yeah, you know, I, I think there's a few things there. Jeff, one is, you know, and, and this is something we've talked about on the pod before, and I, I know, you know, I've asked Coach Staley about it, and he got a little defensive when I did, but the Chargers need to learn how to win. That's what the Chiefs do. They, they know how to win, you know, when they are trailing in games, when they're down double digits. They know how to get that score that they absolutely have to get to make sure they're within striking distance in the fourth quarter, and it doesn't matter if it's 13 seconds in the AFC championship game last year, or if it's five minutes in the Super Bowl, they just know how to win games. And yep. to me, that is that is the one thing that this Chargers team has been missing the last couple of years is, you know, they have the lead at home on, on Thursday night football or whatever that was, Sunday night football against the Chiefs with two minutes left and they can't close the deal. They're in Kansas City and the pick six, like that's – to me, that's – and look, I don't know how you coach that. I don't know how you sign players to do that. But that, to me, is the one thing that the Chiefs do um, that is very reminiscent of the Patriots. It doesn't matter if it's 38-35 or if it's 17-13. They're, they're always on the right end of that score. And and I think the second thing that, that you got into there, you know, was these offensive players that they plug in are ready to perform. You know, if it's Marquez Valdez, Marquez Valdez Scantling, if it's, you know, they, they trade for Kadarius Tony, who was who became an afterthought for the Giants, and he has that that killer like they know their personnel and they have a play caller that, you know, makes those play calls for his personnel and it befuddles their opponents. I mean, you've got a defense that you know, and we'll get into this a little bit more, but like when you have a defense that was effect as effective as the Eagles were all season long, and you see two guys wide open for touchdowns in the Super Bowl, I mean, wide ass open, you know, yeah. by 10 yards, that speaks to play caller, quarterback, execution, doing what your players do best. And I, I to me, like those are the takeaways, Chris, that, that I see from that Super Bowl and, and what the Chargers can point to. I don't know what the answers are, but because I don't know how you answer, well, how do you win? But I think that's that's got to be it. Like, what are we doing wrong in the critical moments of games where we lose these games instead of win these games? Yeah. And, Jeff, I'll ask you this, too, because, you know, money alluded to it. Also, zero sacks. The, the Eagles had 70 sacks this year. Zero in that game. When the Eagles got up in Arizona and, and they looked like they were going to run away with it for a minute – what were your thoughts, Jeff? Because you've seen this story too many times to know that the Chiefs were out of yeah, it. Yeah, I think money hit it right on the head. It's just, and I think that again, I, I just keep, you know, I'm going to put a halo over the guy's head here, but it's Mahomes again. Like, we, I mean, you always hear this, and I, I think it's true. I, I think they really believe with Justin Herbert, the Chargers have said for three years now, as long as we've got him, we're in the game. We know we're in the game. We know we're in the game. And I think they really, they really believe that. The difference is, with Mahomes, there's such a track record now that that everybody believes it. Like the you just the other team believes <laughs> believes it. You know, you, at the end of the first half, okay, it's a ten point game. Mahomes is my I, I had my binoculars trained on Mahomes leaving the field. I want to see how badly he was limping. He's limping yeah. off the field. They're down ten, and I, I remember at the time thinking this. The, I maybe he's done now. Maybe this is it. You know, maybe with him being yeah. hurt. And then you saw what happened. They come out in the second half, and they literally, they, Eagles, literally cannot stop them. You know, three straight touchdowns. One, obviously, was after the punt returns, very short field. But three touchdowns, and the fourth time they get the ball, they take up the last five minutes. They get the help with the holding call. But, I mean, five minutes to go in that game, two timeouts for the Eagles. 
I didn't think there was any chance that they were going to run that t- that five minutes off the clock and give the Eagles no time. I thought they're going to go down, they're going to do something. And now we're going to see if Jalen Hurts can finish the game and either win it or send it to overtime. And you know, all they needed was a little bit of a break, maybe with that holding call, and that's all. It t- and they they were able to kill the rest of that five. That's just to be able to do that at the end of the Super Bowl is you know, and that's a tribute to the whole offense, the offensive line. I mean, just that was ridiculous. Five minutes to go, the other team has two timeouts, and the Eagles, you saw what they ended up getting. You know, they had one last ridiculous chance for one play. That's uh, it, that was such a performance that second half. It was almost a perfect second half that the Chiefs played. I just really impressive. Money, it's exactly yeah, I what you just said. Kind it's, of... it's winning plays. It's winning plays, Money, right? The Jarrett McKinnon well, sliding at the look, one. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I think, like, to me, the, the, the one thing that, that you brought up there, Jeff, that I think is important to address, and look, I, I, again, I, I, is it fair? Maybe, maybe not. But Justin Herbert had a 27-0 lead in a playoff game, and they lost the game. Like, that's, you know, you may not want it because we love Herbert as much as we do, but that sticks to Herbert. Like, that's, that's stuck on you. I'm sorry. You know, there is a portion of that that is now attached to him um, that – like we talked about, you know, Mahomes in in the Super Bowl down ten, hobbling off the field, going in, and then all of a sudden has a perfect second half and just carves up what was the best defense in football. He had a lot of help, obviously, from his offensive line, but I think that's something that I've got to believe. Justin is watching that game and you know thinking about you know the the, the situation that presented itself to him. And it, look, it's not all on Justin. You know, Austin Eckler rushed for negative three yards in the second half. You know, it's it's not like it's all on him, but I do think that sticks to you. And that's as as a leader of a team, as as the quarterback that's going to get probably the largest contract in the NFL this offseason. You know, that's something that I think he's got him that, that he's got to probably reconcile. Like, man, this this guy's on one leg and down 10 and it looks like it's getting away from them. And he ends up rallying and scoring 38 point, 28 points in the second half in essentially a perfect performance and we're up 27-0 and somehow figure out how to lose that game. Like to me, that's, I think something that I would, that if I were, you know, if I were looking at it, I would probably figure out how do I connect these two? Like what, what are we doing and what can, what can we do better to make sure that that does not happen? Uh, Again, like there's a lot that goes into it. It's the injury to Jamari. It's the inability, you know, there's a reason why Kellen Moore is here in play calling and the inability on designed runs to get anything positive going. Um, But when I, and just like expanding that, Chris and and Jeff, like when I watch the performance from Jalen Hurts, you know, and just willing to do anything and everything to get that last yard, to get that single yard and the way that Steichen, you know, and the way that Coach Steichen, and we and like that's something I hope Kellen Moore gets back to, just using Jalen Hurts' feet as a weapon to as an equalizer, you know. And he did it with Justin his rookie year. You know, we just saw Justin moving a lot more that rookie year than the last two years. And I think that's something I'd love to see Kellen Moore get back to, you know, specifically all those third and fourth down conversions, you know, that were a byproduct or a direct result of him, you know, Jalen's willingness to use his legs to put immense pressure on a defense. Yeah, it's it's true. I mean, I think uh, a lot of people are of that opinion um, that you know, moving Justin uh, Justin Herbert a little more, uh, using his legs a little more. I, I mean, they, we saw that with Mahomes, right? Too in that second half, a couple of those runs, and you know, and we we see what the, the Eagles do with Hurts, and especially those short yardage things. I I don't know. If the, it, it seems like to me that that power sneak stuff is almost gonna they're going to have to outlaw that, aren't they, or something? I don't, I don't understand. I, I'm guessing. I mean, it's not. I don't think it's going to happen this off season, Jeff. But 100. percent But you know what? As long as it's there, right? use it. I, I'm like, with you completely. You and know? we know how, how, how the Chargers have struggled with short, short, short yardage for a while now. So, yeah, I think uh, you know it's the old thing with with Herbert. You know, you got to be careful with them, right? You got to be careful with these guys. Uh, but you know, Josh Allen seems to do it, and he and Herbert are very similar. That you know, structure. Status-wise, you know, their physicality very similar. So, I think uh, I think the Chargers. Uh, I would be shocked if, uh, assuming you know, as long as Justin is healthy and isn't dealing with the, the you know the rib stuff and the shoulder stuff, where it could be something significant. I, I think they're. Yeah. 
By the way, where did he get hurt? Where where did he get hurt, Jeff? Did he get hurt on the run or did he get hurt yeah, in the pocket? Yeah, yeah. So yep. No, you know? exactly. <laughs> so I I think yeah I think the uh, you know you're hearing a, quite a bit of rumblings of that here in the last few weeks about after the Kellen Moore got hired that that's something they they need to get back to and I, and I think uh, I think we will see that. A couple of things that stand out to me in Justin's career that that run in the Rose Bowl. And then that Sunday night game against Pittsburgh where he ran all over the field because mm-hmm. they were giving it to him. And it was partly the reason they won that game. Um, Justin didn't run as much last year. And, and you're right, maybe it's because of the ribs and the shoulder. But that's a weapon on this offense that needs to be utilized more. And, and I just wonder how it's going to look next year. Um, Jeff, uh, Doug Nussmeyer is now the quarterback's coach, was with Kellen Moore in Dallas and he has an interesting background. A lot of, a lot of uh, stops in college. I think he interviewed for the Ravens offensive coordinator position. He was also linked to the Miami offensive coordinator position with Justin's former coach, Mario Cristobal. But uh, comes to Los Angeles with Kellen Moore. Um, I guess your thoughts on that hire. It probably makes sense to link the offensive coordinator and the qu- quarterback coach from a different stop um, and maybe make that offense a little bit more translatable to Herbert. Yeah, I, I think uh... – my take on a lot of these position coaches, especially, um, you know, because people always say, you know, they this this position coach is in, what does it mean now? And um, a, a lot of this, I, I, a lot of these guys are, they're all really good coaches. I don't think they would be in the NFL if they were a bad coach. But it, it, to me, it, it comes, it always, it's the same thing. It always just comes down to the players. And uh, e- even the coordinators, I know they may, they can make a difference. There's no doubt about it. But let's, you know, a perfect illustration of what I'm talking about is the in the second half of the Super Bowl, we saw, you know, Money, you mentioned those two plays, the, the Chiefs' last two touchdowns where Tony's wide open. They run that jet sweep, you know, U-turn, he goes back, he's wide open. They do that. It appears to be about the same thing on the opposite side of the field, the Sky Moore, wide open for a touchdown. Well, we've learned since then, thanks to NFL Films, that that second one, the Sky Moore, was a mistake. It was, they actually were in the wrong formation, right? They come up to the line of scrimmage, and it's all messed up. And like Mahomes is looking at it. He's looking at the shot. The play clock's run, running down. He looks around. All right, we're just going to do this. He waves his hands. Here comes Sky Moore. And so the point is, you know, that play happened in the press box. Everybody, first thing we all thought was, oh, my God, Andy Reid. Oh, my God, Eric. Eric back back, yeah. These guys are so brilliant. Look at the smart, how smart they are. Look what they did. Come to find out, it was actually they, Mahomes claims he called it right. They lined up wrong, and the players just said, "Okay, we, we're going to figure it out anyway." Mahomes, we're going to go through it anyway. We don't have time for anything else. Let's just run it. I'm going to do this instead, and it, it turns out to be a great play. The players make that play. The point is, as much as we want to give the, all these the coaches, and it's like, like a big deal. They got this guy. They they got that guy. Uh, it really does come down to the players. Now, having said that, yes, I mean, there's no doubt that these coaches do make a difference, but. It's, uh, you know, in terms of what like a quarterback coach is going to mean for Justin, it's really hard to tell until they they get out there and they they get on, you know, in practice and they get in these meetings. Um, I think the connection between Moore and Nussmeyer is obviously there um, since they've worked together. So I think that that, you know, that that's going to be seamless, obviously. And with Justin, I mean, come on, you guys, we we could coach him and he's going to be a really good quarterback. Right. I mean. It's not yeah. um, uh, it's not that hard to be a really good coach when he's your he's your quarterback when you have a player like that. So uh, we'll see. I, I think uh, you know the, I think we're all hoping for a little more creativity with this new uh, offensive uh, coach. This the coaches on this offense now a little more creativity, a little more ingenuity. Um, you know some of the motion pre snap stuff. I mean, we talked about Herbert moving a little more. I think we're all hoping that and expecting to see that. But we'll. Well, um, you know, we'll see when, when, when this really gets into motion, what it, what it looks like. Yeah, I think, you know, for me, Chris, it's – I just want someone to challenge him. You know, I think about, you know, Brady on his retirement tour and, you know, talking to, you know, Jim Gray or whatever on his podcast or, or Peyton Manning talking, you know, through his broadcast with his brother. Like, there's a commonality there. And they always say, like, I didn't want coaches that, that coddled me. I got them out of there immediately. I need guys that are telling me what I'm doing wrong. Like I need dudes to challenge me. And, and that's what the great ones want, you know? And I'm, yeah. look, I, I'm not in the room. I don't know if, if Shane Day and, and Joe Lombardi were a little too easy on, 
on Justin, but I, th- that's that's what I would want from a quarterback coach. You know, as someone saying, "Hey, you know what? Why are you dropping your arm angle so much? You're six foot six, man. Let's the sidearm stuff. I get it. There's some sweet plays in there when you're wrapping it around, but man, when you're you're dropping that slot repeatedly, let's let's get away from that, dude. Let's let's use that stature. You know, let's use your levers and let's get that thing. I like that's that's what I think you want is someone that's confident. And I think the key with Nussmeyer is that he and Kellen have been together. So it's not somewhat, you know, whereas Shane Day and Joe Lombardi, they're coming from two different places, you know. And I think maybe there was this sort of, I don't want to call awkwardness, but a a warming up period, you know. Am I overstepping my bounds by getting with Justin? Is, you know, am I I supposed to be, you know. So I think the nice thing about bringing in Doug with Kellen is they've already done it. You know, they did it with Dak. They did it with Cooper Rush. Like they've, you know, they've worked together. So I think that's if they have a good cop, bad cop routine, whatever it may be, you know, that already exists. There's reps there. So that's what I, you know, that's one of the things I like about the hire. And I don't think, just, you know, look, D- Dak was a fourth round, you know, was fourth rounder, you know, became an all, became a pro bowler, you know, led the league in passing. So it's, it's clear they can coach guys up. You know, Cooper Rush went undefeated, right? Or three and one, whatever it was. So we know they can coach. Um, you know, I think, I look at the, you know, I, let's just talk about, you know, kind of the, the, the Eagles and the, the Cowboys. These are two teams that had, I think, I want to say they're the two most, or if not two of the top three, I think, most rushing first downs in the league. You know, and we talked about that getting connected. And you saw how important that run attack was for the Chiefs in the, in, in the Super Bowl. You know, so I, I think that's something that, you know, we, we focus so much on, on Justin I think it's so important to focus on the rushing game, specifically designed rushes. And you saw what that was able to do for the Eagles, the way that the chain Steichen, you know, and Nick Sirianni called Sirianni called that game. You know, they got eight minute drives, they got seven minute drive, these scoring drives that are just taking a ton of time off the clock, and that's what you got to do. Um, because, you know, and I guess this is as good a time as any to get into it. Like, I don't, I don't want to hear about defense anymore. Like, I just, I don't, I don't care. You know, I don't care. I, I, it's like, it does not matter. It just doesn't. It, it doesn't matter. It, the, these offenses, the way games are called, yeah, I don't, I, it's 38 to 35. <laughs> you yeah. know, the, the Eagles put 35 up on the Chiefs with the number one defense and they lost by three. Like, I, you know, the Bills had the number one defense and Joe Burrow went in there and carved them to shreds. So like, to me, this off season, you know, go get as many weapons as you can keep getting depth on the offensive line. Get me a new tight end. Get me a speed receiver. Get me another running back. Just freaking load up on offense and whatever. Figure out how to coach it up, Brandon, because I I just I, – you got to score 35 points to win these games. Like, that's just the reality of it. Your offense has got to be able to put points on the board when they absolutely have to, I think, moving forward. That's just what the league has become. And, and the reality is, Bunny, with Justin Herbert, you should be scoring. 30 yeah. plus points a game like no no questions asked and I, I love the 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 comparison to like I, I think of Bill O'Brien and Tom Brady cussing each other out on the sideline yeah like, that's what made Tom better right is to be challenged by a guy so you, you hope you see that um let's take a quick break and let's dig in a little bit more uh on, on the offense what changes could be coming and what maybe free agency in the draft will bring All right, guys, a big thank you to our partner, Microsoft Surface, celebrating 10 years of partnership with the NFL. As the official laptop, tablet, and sideline technology provider for the LA Chargers, Microsoft Surface provides players and coaches with the tools to succeed both on and off the field every day. Learn more about Surface at Surface.com. All right, Money, you teed it up perfectly. Let's talk offense now. And, you know, the Chargers are going to have some decisions to make, uh, on both sides of the ball with, with Khalil Mack and, and Keenan Allen. Um, I think they need a tight end. I think they're going to need a speed receiver. I think they may need another running back to compliment Austin Eckler. Jeff, I'll start with you. Where do you begin in terms of reloading this offense? Well, I think we all got have to figure out Keenan Allen's situation, right? That's, that's kind of the, the, one of the linchpins here. Um, and then, then we go from there. But I, uh, th- I will tell you when they, after the Kellen Moore hire, um, that next day, the story I wrote about had nothing to do with Justin Herbert. I wrote about what does this mean for the running game? Because I think that's where this, uh, that's, that's going to be the key for the, this, the Chargers in 2023. We, we know Justin Herbert's going to be fine. 
you know, as long as he's healthy, they're going to be able to throw the ball and they're going to put, he's going to put up big numbers and, and pro bowl type numbers. The key to me is, is running the ball. And I think you've, uh, you know, you, you, the offensive line, you, you can't invest enough in the offensive line. Um, when you look at the Cowboys, you know, Kellen Moore was there. The Cowboys offense was really good. Well, their offensive line was really good. What do we always hear about? We hear about the Kyle Shanahan offense. We hear about Shane, uh, Sean, Sean McVay's offense. When those offenses are really good, what are what, the 49ers, what's really great about the 49ers is their offensive line. When the Rams won the Super Bowl, they had a really good offensive line. They lost a bunch of that offensive line and they stink. Okay. You look at the Chiefs, the Eagles. Those both those teams have really good offensive lines. I I I, under, I get it. I I think they need more speed. Absolutely, a hundred percent. Especially on the perimeter, they need more speed. But they need to figure out this running game, and they need to be able to run the ball. I'm not saying they have to lead the league, but they've got to be a threat to run the ball. And you saw it when the you know Kellen Moore with the Cowboys. They had you know two and Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard, two really good running backs. And they, you yeah. know, they, they were able to run the ball. So that's what the Chargers, Chargers need to be able – they need to figure out a way to run the ball efficiently and effectively. And I, if they could have run the ball at all in the second half of that, that playoff game in Jacksonville, they probably win the yeah. game. So to me, you know, the, the, big, the big question is Keenan and what's going to happen there. But in terms of rebuild or, or beefing up this deep offense, I, I, I just – I, you know, you got to, you got to be able to run the ball. And I think that's the offensive line. And, and part of that too, obviously they're going to get Rashawn Slater back. So that's a big, a big plus, but, Huge. but you know, they, uh, you know, if they, they get another tackle, I mean, that'd be great. I mean, Trey Pipkins was, was good. And I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, it, we're talking about, you know, they don't have a ton of money to work with, unfortunately, but uh, to me, it's oh. like the, the next few months here, they've got to figure out this, this rushing game and, and be able to run the ball next season because that that's going to be the I think the key to to this offense. You know, money talks about putting up points. That's that's going to be the key is if you can run the ball and all of a sudden now it it makes Herbert even that much better. Yeah, look, I mean, there's 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 a bunch of different ways to attack this, right? One, uh, the Saints go into every season somehow thirty million bucks over the cap, and <laughs> every, somehow every they year. sign free agents. And they're, there's they're ways high. to do it. There's yeah. ways to do it. Yeah, same 100%. with the Rams, right? When they won their Super Bowl, like they were thirty million. So the idea that they've got to start cutting players because they're twenty-one mil over, no, they they can they can attack this a different way. You can restructure, um, yeah, exactly. You can convert salary into signing bonus. You can add bogus years onto the back, and you know lower that cap number and and end up adding a little bit of money up front for these guys. There's ways to do it. It's just whether or not you want to. Um, and whether or not you want to write the checks. And, and this is where I think a lot of people will be like, oh, you know, you got to be, you know, Spanos ownership, you got to spend money. They did. They spent a grip of cash last year. Last year was the year that they spent all that money per what I'm guessing is Coach Staley saying, hey, our offense is good. I need this. And I need this, and I need this. And what did they do? They traded for $25 million in Khalil Mack. They signed $20 million combined in Austin Johnson and Sebastian Joseph Day. They signed, you know, $75 million bucks J.C. Jackson. Well, now that bill's come due. So, like, the, the thing is, you don't come to me and, you know, if I'm Tom Telesco and, you know, you know, here's Brandon Staley saying, hey, I need more. No, I— I gave you all that last year, and now Ed and I have got to figure this out because now we're in a mess because— you know, you told us this, 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 and this, and we gave it to you, and it didn't work. And, you know, Mikey Davis was a better cornerback at 10 mil per year than J.C. Jackson at 20 mil per year. So now I'm stuck. Now I've got to figure this out. So, like, to me, that's more – I would love for it to be more cap gymnastics than we got to get rid of Keenan Allen's 21 million bucks. Because, like I said, I just think it's too important. I, I think – you know, I, I think having Keenan and Josh and, and Mike Williams and adding two speed receivers and drafting a tight end in the first round or signing Dalton Schultz from the Cowboys. And, like, to me, that's the solution. You know, I'm not going to name names because I don't want to put people out on the street, but if I'm looking to move people, it's going to be on the defensive side. You know, e even though that was the side that, that a lot of people circle and say, wow, they really let us down. You know, look at all these statistical numbers. I don't – whatever, man. Uh, keep the offense intact and let's go out there and – 
and allow 24 and score 31 or allow 25 and score 30, whatever. Like that's, so I think that's what people need to remember is one, it can be done because it happens every year. And two, you know, this was a team that pushed all their chips to the center last year and spent 200 million bucks in free agency to try to make that Super Bowl run this year. So by no means is ownership or the front office cheap. They just did it last year. And now they've got to figure out a way to account for all of those contracts they handed out and all those checks they wrote last year, you know, as we go into 2023. Yeah. And, and Jeff, now, now you don't know if JC Jackson is going to be ready for, for the start of the season. Um, Khalil Mack is a year older. Um, and then go, just going back to the offense, guys, I, I, I'm looking down at both the, the cap numbers this year and also just uh, the box scores last year. The Chargers only scored over 30 points twice last year. That's um, why Kellen Moore's here. And that's why Kellen Moore's here. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I agree with you, though, Jeff. I, I, you know, Money and I have talked about it. I think we talked about it last year, too, this offseason, in terms of trying to find some consistency of a running game. What I loved about what Shane Steichen and the Eagles did was every single week, Jeff, was different. It was either a run-heavy game or it was like, we're going we're gonna to air it out to Devontae Smith and, and A.J. Brown. And, and I feel like the Chargers, they need to establish that type of identity on offense. But yes, it, it runs through Justin Herbert. But if there's a game where we can rely on the running game to beat you and then have Justin hit you over the top with play action or whatever the case may be, it, I, I feel like the offense lacked that. It, it was more predictable last year, and that needs to change in 2020. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the other night... Uh, uh, after the Super Bowl, we're down there. I'm down there with uh, Nick Sirianni at press conference. And one of the first questions was about the lack of a pass rush. And the first thing he said was, well, they ran the ball. You know, that was, that. you know, look what they ran. They ran for like 150, didn't they? You know, and, and that, you know, yeah. again, it just goes back to that's the importance of it's. It's not just look at what we ran for this many touchdowns or this many yards. It's because we ran all of a sudden now we weren't able to pressure the quarterback as much because, you know, we got to, we got to look at Pacheco as he takes off, you know, Mahomes is a threat to take off. So, so it, it, this, like it's, it's, it, you know, football has been around for a billion years, right. And for a billion years, they've been talking about, you got to run the ball. You got to run the ball. Well, Stop the yeah. run, run the ball. It, you know, we're not, we're not inventing anything new here. It's just, it's just a, that's the way this game works. And, you know, you guys. I mean, you guys watched the games last year. There were times I, I wanted to scream. It was so it was so hard to watch these guys try to run. It was ridiculous. They just it was impossible. They couldn't run the ball. So many games were. I mean, they weren't even a threat to run. You get into the second half, and there was zero threat. You know, that last game in Jacksonville, there was there was no threat of them running the ball in the second half of the game. It just it's hard to watch. You know, and you, and you see what it does to so the entire offense. Just grinds to a halt when you're aren't a threat to run the ball and, and the, the other team knows it and they they don't even have to worry about you running the ball even when you got a guy look how productive Austin Eckler is and he can't you know he just can't do anything and you, that that's got to get fixed yeah and I think that's look it's a product of, and again it's why Kellen Moore is here it's also a product of all the checkdowns and just all the sticks and all the yeah. curls and yeah. all the comebacks so if you watch, like if you go back and watch every game and you start watching the defensive alignment, they're not afraid like, like they were two years ago and especially three years ago. Three, you know, when Herbert was a rookie, they were terrified oh, yeah. of his arm. I mean, terrified. You had too high, way deep. And, and now you can run into that, you know. Same thing last year. Not, you know, not 2022, but 2021, you know. So you, because you're taking those shots, and this year, they took almost zero shots. Like every, I can't tell you how many times we're calling the game, and DJ's like, you know, it's a perfect spot for a shot play. You can kind of see the alignment. And, you know, I'd love to see that play action bootleg and Herbert, you know, just throwing across. And it's a check down for three yards. And so I think, you know, going back to your question or your point, Chris, about, you know, the coaches and Doug, Doug and, and Kellen, like, they got to get Justin back to what makes him different from everybody else in the league and that's he's got this freaking cannon that no one else has and he can he doesn't have to like I think that's what people don't what, they're like oh well look how far this ball traveled for just pick your quarterback Tua or, or whoever 
Justin doesn't have to set up. He doesn't have to drop, and he doesn't have to, you know, jump into those balls to push him down. You can have a pass rush coming in his lap, boom, and he just snaps it, and that ball goes 50 yards on a rope. Like, that's the difference, you know, where you don't have to have these deep drops, and he doesn't have to crow hop into it to push it downfield. You get a 4-2-5, 4-3-5 guy out there, and he's taking a five-step drop. That guy's got his guy beat, boom. You know, those, those are the plays that they were missing that led to an ineffective run game, you know? So now you've got all, you've, you've got secondary play and press, you're playing press man, you know, your corners, you've got safeties that are crept up into the box because they just don't, they didn't fear it. So I, I think there, you know, there's, again, I don't mean for this to be a pile on Joe Lombardi podcast. That's not my intention. It sort of sounds like it, but it's like, you can't run into stacked boxes. You know, you can't run, when when Foster Sorrell is your right tackle and and Zion Johnson's your right guard, when you've got you know Salyer and and Filer and and Corey on the left side, like that's what was working. Like or 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 run it to the right side when it was working with Trey and Zion. There were games when it was just befuddling, you know, what plays were being called on those designed runs. So for me, like I feel, you know, I feel like and and man. I tell you, we talked about it already, Jeff. I'll just, you know, kind of throw this to you. Like, to me, one of the big, I think you brought this up, Chris. You know, like one of the great mistakes, you know, I, I hate saying it, but one of the great mistakes of the season was, why why is Isaiah Spiller not your featured back in week 18? I got to see what this guy can do. Like, I, I've got, th- th- this game means nothing. It means nothing. Give me Isaiah Spiller for 20 touches. And let's call some designed runs and let's take some shot plays to open it up for him so I know what I got because I have no idea what I got. Yeah, I mean, we still don't know, right? We have no no clue. I mean, and, and now everybody yeah. – He looked great at A&M. And, and now everybody's talking about they're going to, you know, maybe they should draft a running back in the first round. Here we go again. Yeah. I mean, I've covered this team since 2018. I think they've taken a running back every year except one in the draft. They've even down this road. And you, they, they, they draft these guys and we never really see them again. Um so I, I, I would think a lot of people thought we'd see a Spiller at least at, at least out there at some point. And we, and we just we didn't. We barely saw him at all this season. And, and you, know, you, we, you know, you talk about the shots and, you know, that I mean, we all have seen it a million times and uh, not a million times. But we've seen it enough where, you know, Justin you know, rolls out, stops, looks back and throws. But, you know, when Mike Williams is the only option on that, it's not the same. Like, I know Mike Williams, yeah, he's he can make those – he can get those 50-50 balls and all that, and he can throw it up for him deep. It's not the same as having a speed guy who can run by people, even if it's Jalen yeah. Guyton who can run by you. Like, we – you know, it's just not the same. And they can, they can, they can reference Mike Williams, and, and, and that's a great option to have. And to know that he can, you know, Justin can just throw it up there at times, and he needs to, and Mike can make make these ridiculous catches. But it's not the same as if you have some, if you have speed out there. And the, that, you know, we did uh, Eric Smith, uh, you know, the Chargers dot com. He we did a mailbag kind of thing. And what's what's the most important thing this team needs to add? I I said speed. You know, that's the, that's what this they need to get faster. And I mean, yeah. there's, there's no doubt about that. And and you're right on money. If they, you know, when you have that speed outside and that threat, it does. It's gonna loosen up the running game. It's it, it just does. That's the way football works. And the, and they have to get, they have to do something. I mean, we we talked about it last off season. They never did. There's no way they can make that mistake again and go into the season thinking, okay, Mike Williams is our deep threat. I mean, that, that's not gonna work. They need they need actual speed. Guys, I'll, I'll pose this to both you guys. Um, we were talking about the cap, and obviously we know Justin Herbert's going to get paid at some point, but uh, there are a, a number of quarterbacks in that same boat as Justin Herbert. Uh, two of them have been to a Super Bowl, and, and Joe Burrow and Jalen Hurts. The other one, Lamar Jackson, was MVP of the league. So I, I think it's an interesting offseason to see which domino is going to fall first, where Justin falls in line with that, and how that affects the cap. Now, Tom Telesco has been steadfast in saying that he doesn't really buy into the rookie window for the quarterback, and you know there's things you could still do. But Jeff, I'll start with you. Uh, where do you think that that falls in line in terms of Justin and these other quarterbacks, and how much wiggle room do you think it gives the Chargers to get the weapons that they need to to, 
to kind of help Justin be at his best? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, money said it. The, these teams seem to figure it out. Other teams do it, and they figure it out. And they uh, so yeah. there is a way around it. And we, we know there's a, a path to take. But I'm I'm interested in what you guys think. If you're Justin, do you dare sign before Joe Burrow? Don't you have to kind of see what happens with Joe Burrow and sort of let him? I mean, what do you, what do you guys think? I, I I think that if I'm him, it's yeah. like, well, let's see what Joe Burrow does, and then we'll. Uh... That's what's tricky is because because those guys have been to a Super Bowl and Lamar has won an MVP. So like, I I don't know I don't know what the strategy is, Money. To me, it's. You know, to, look, the, the, the Tom Telesco doesn't want to hear this, but I just go to his people and say, okay, what do you want? Let's just, let's, let's get that baseline. What is it, if we can do a deal today, you know, what does it look like? Is it, is it Mahomesian? Is it 10 years, $500 million? Is it more, you know, are you going to do the Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson thing? Hey, no, we want, you know, five years fully guaranteed. That's not going to happen. The, the, like the whole fully guaranteed thing's not going to happen. Um, I think the, like I look at Mahomes' contract, like that's, and it's funny because now it's been criticized a little bit as we've gotten away from it. Like when they first gave it to him, they were like, my God, they gave this guy half a billion dollars. But when you look at it, I think not to get too deep into cap, you know, linguist, you know, cap conversation here, but Remember, the second you do a deal, whatever is guaranteed has got to show up in escrow. Like, you've got to write a check for that. So, the like, a $260 million guaranteed deal, well, now the Spanos just have to write a check for $260 million and deposit it into account that they can't touch. It's stupid. It's archaic. It should be gone because of how much money these teams make now from TV deals that are guaranteed deals for the next 10 years. Like, you shouldn't have to do that because it really gives an advantage to owners that have just obscene amounts of money that can afford to put half a billion dollars into account that they can't sure. touch for five years. So to me, it's okay. Let's, let's focus on maybe the, you know, the, the Josh Allen, the, the Patrick Mahomes deal. And what does it look like? Cause like, I think about, you know, as I'm kind of going through, I'm, I'm actually on, on spot track right now you know, looking at all of it. And so Mahomes was 10 years, $450 million, right? With 63 guaranteed. You know, Josh's is six years, $258 million with 100 million guaranteed. Um, so th it's, they're all going to look relatively the same. You know, people are like, well, you know, Josh was the only the highest paid quarterback for a day. And then Russell Wilson topped it or whatever. You know what I mean? It was like one of those things. And then Aaron Rodgers topped it. Like, look... I, the thing, the thing you have to separate is it's not always the player, it's the agent. So I don't know how Justin's agents want to operate this, but I think if you can just make Justin the highest paid player in football the day you do the deal, it doesn't matter if Burrow passes it the next day because if he passes it, it's going to be by a million dollars or something you know that's negligible. So exactly. I, I think you figure out, do you want it to be a Josh Allen deal, 6 258 100 guaranteed? Do you want it to be a Patrick Mahomes deal, 10, 500, you know, with less guaranteed. And, and that gives us a little bit more wiggle room with, do we want to stack it on the back end? Do we want to stack it here on the front end? How are we going to do it? So I think, like, to me, I don't think it's, this is, again, if, if Tom were here, he'd slap me. I don't think this is a hard deal. I think it's just a, what do you want it to look like? And we, let me just get this off my plate. This is priority one. Let me get it off my plate. If it's, you know, if Josh is six for 258 for an average of 43, all right, fine. I'm going to give you six for 280 for an average of 49, and let's go get it done. You know, and, and 105 million at signing instead of 100 million, you know, kind of thing. Like, to me, it's, I just, I don't think it's a hard deal because every deal falls in line. All of these quarterbacks are slotted. Like, okay, well, he was six for 258. All right, you're seven for two, or you're six for 280. You're six. Okay, now here comes Joe Burrow. He's six for 282. Oh, no. Uh, don't hire Justin's agent. He cost him $2 million bucks on his $282 million deal. Like, yeah. to me, that's just ultimately what this looks like. You ride, you ride the wave of what year we're in, right? And that's what Kyler Murray did, oh. frankly. I mean, he, Kyler Murray got paid because of because of the guys who got paid that year, right? So it's all going to be, I think, in the, in the yeah. same bucket. I'm just fascinated to see how it plays out and who signs first and who benefits from signing last. Um, 
that'll be stuff that'll that'll happen over the next few months. Yeah. Final thing. Does it tie your hands guys. with everything else, Chris? That's the thing. Yeah. Like you've got to, you know, in order to get, to restructure everybody else because of escrow. Like, how much do I now have to put into escrow? How many of these contracts do I have to rework into signing bonuses? It, it, you know, converting salaries into signing bonuses and adding years, like. I do not envy Ed <laughs> McGuire at all and, and what he's yeah. got to figure out this offseason to, to put a Super Bowl contending team on the field while Justin's still on his rookie deal. Yeah, no question. And you, you know these guys have worked behind the scenes. They know that this day was coming. Um, so, you know, we'll see what it looks like in a, in a couple of months as, as free agency gets underway. But I, I figured we may as well just get the entire landscape of the AFC West here, guys. And I'll get you out of here on this. And, Jeff, I'll start with you. Just your thoughts on, on Sean Payton joining the AFC West, maybe Rex Ryan's coming with him as his defensive coordinator and Derek Carr officially released by the Raiders and new quarterbacks coming in to Las Vegas. Could it be Rodgers? Could it be Garoppolo? Uh, Your thoughts on what the other two teams in the AFC West look like? Yeah. You know, it's funny that everybody talked about when the the Peyton deal happened with the Broncos. Oh boy. Now the Chargers have to deal with that. Well, don't forget the last time they played the Broncos, they lost. (laughs) So, so it's not yeah. as if they've beaten the Broncos 10 straight times. So, uh, but yeah, you know, it, it's here we go again with the AFC West, right? Remember last year we were talking about how it's the best division of football and everybody's going to make the playoffs and we saw what happened. So it's really hard to tell with these things. Uh, but certainly you got to believe the Broncos are going to be better and you got to figure Sean Payton's going to figure out something with Russell Wilson. The Raiders, who knows? You know, the Raiders always, they seem to have a way of uh, raidering at the end of the day, you know, and uh, who knows what they're going to do with their quarterback thing. Obviously, uh, Aaron Rodgers would be, it'd be very interesting. It wouldn't be, that would not be a great development for the Chargers. Um, uh, So uh, it's just, you know, we're just at the beginning of this. Uh, Who who knows where this is all going to go, but uh, it's, it's going to be a a tough division no matter what, just because the Chiefs are there as we've talked about. So, uh, um, we'll see what the Raiders, the Raiders are the one that's really most interesting to me because they could kind of go either way on this thing. I, I think the Broncos are going to improve and the Raiders, who knows? Yeah, Chris, I think the Raiders, look, I think they're gonna make a run at Aaron Rodgers. Obviously they've got the money, you know, they're like 70 million bucks under the cap or whatever. So they could easily, you know, take on his $50 million salary. How do Aaron Rodgers and Josh McDaniels get along? <laughs> that I, I don't know because Josh is very, very stubborn about how he wants football played and and Aaron is very stubborn about how he wants to play football like if you told me I know you talked about Jeff you just said like it would not be a good development for the Chargers well there's a I think there's a lane there like if you tell me that we're gonna get disinterested Aaron Rodgers that doesn't want to work out with his rookie receivers in minicamp and doesn't show up and and it's like hey you got Romeo Dubs and you got Christian Watson you got all these guys and oh you're not even gonna show up till the first day of training camp (laughs) Okay, uh, then yeah, I'm all for it. Bring him in. Bring him in to cash his last two years and, and his little darkness tour and his ayahuasca <laughs> tour, and you can be that guy, dude. Um, I'm all about it. Put him on the Raiders in a half second because, man, between that personality and Josh McDaniels, that's going to get sideways in a hurry. Um, I think it's more likely that it's Jimmy Garoppolo and they draft somebody, you know, if, if, if like, I, you want to, like, what I think is, is a scary development is they bring in Jimmy and they draft Anthony Richardson and they just let him sit for a year or two. And, and like that to me is a more scary long-term, you know, development. Um, as far as the Broncos go, look, yeah, I think you said it, Jeff. I don't think they can't be worse. The defense was great last year. Now they lost to Jerry. They lost Vic Fangio the year before. So it'll be interesting you know, I'm kind of up for a, a Rex Ryan coordinated defense. <laughs> I wouldn't mind, you know, considering the, the shots that he took at Brandon Staley every single day on ESPN, calling him boy wonder and laughing when they fail. And like that would, I think be a great development for us. I would absolutely love to see that. Um, Sean's one of the, Sean Payton's one of the great play callers in the history of the league. I mean, every single year, no matter who was out there for the saints, they were great. Um, But you know, there's a little part of me. and, And again, maybe this is the charger bias. It's like, it sounded like Sean was, was really about that money. Like, you know, you kept hearing about, oh, am I interested in this? Okay, so is this a, I really want another challenge, or is this a, I really want to cash in? You know, I I cannot believe that that some of the, that McVay and Belichick and these guys are making north of 20 million bucks. I want some of that action. 
So, you know, I, I and again, I don't, I don't know. I heard, um, I heard DJ bring it up on his podcast, and it, it was a great point. He said, you know, both Drew Brees and Russell Wilson spend their offseason in San Diego. He's yeah, like, so Del Bar, if, right? Yeah, if Russell's smart, he's going to be at Drew's house every single day. What do I need to know? Walk me through, you know, what's the most important parts of this? Let's get my receivers out here. And, you know, we can, instead of just me working out with him, Drew, you're out there with us because he's not a coach. He's just a, you know, he's just a guy. So he's, there's nothing, you know, and meanwhile, you can have freaking Sean Payton in his ear, you know, on, on his iPhone or something and his AirPods just saying, hey, have him run through this, have him run through that's all That's all legal. So I, I think it'll be, uh, I, I can't imagine that offense not being really good. But, um, yeah, look, it's what we want. I say it all the time. Like, I don't want it some crappy division. I want, it, I, want it, I want Aaron Rodgers in a Raiders uniform. I want Sean Payton calling the Bronx. I want it to be a heavyweight fight every single time in those six games. I think that's what makes football great, you know, when divisional matchups are that intense and that tight and everybody's good. It's so much fun. Yeah, and the Chargers were on primetime six times this year, and that's fun, yeah. right? The, those, the, the big game 100%. feel for the division games. Uh, it's funny. I think Sean Payton said that Drew Brees was like a uh, special assistant in Del Mar <laughs> for Russell Wilson, said that that, uh, that Russell's yeah. wearing him out down there. Uh, that's so great. That's an interesting development. Javante Williams coming back, Tim Patrick coming back. Remember, Tim Patrick didn't play at all last year. So right. the, the Broncos going to get a couple, guy. Yeah, another, a couple offensive weapons. Um, I, and I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, the Raiders, especially Josh McDaniels with that long-term deal, what if they draft a, a guy like C.J. Stroud, maybe move up in the draft and, and get a guy that they can groom for the next, you know, 10 years? Um, that that could be interesting as well, but I wouldn't be surprised if Aaron Rodgers gets in that division. Um, it's fun. We're, we're in February. We have no idea what's going to happen, but um, all, the, all the predictions ahead of free agency in the draft – are always interesting. Uh, Jeff, you can you can end this podcast by giving us your best Super Bowl party story. I know you were hanging with Sam yeah. Farmer. You you were at a party. What was your favorite party? Um, you know what? And tell us about I, it. I, I have a, I'm very disappointing <laughs> on this front. I I was not a, a big party goer this time around. I, uh, I yeah I, I I hate to no not, really. not to say I didn't have any drinks or anything. I'm just <laughs> as far as. Uh, as far as Super Bowl <laughs> parties go, uh, I kind of laid low a little bit this year. Um, and also, the you know, the big commissioner party, I didn't get an invitation. I don't know what that means, but I uh, I know Sam Farmer attended, but I uh, I didn't ah, get an invitation to that event. So that probably would have been the one, but but they, they didn't want me there, I guess. So what would you do um, instead of the party? I discovered hey, Jeff. that the Phoenix area now has a lot of uh, local breweries. Uh, a lot of them, and I tried to hit as, as I could. <laughs> so, uh, so that was uh, nice. Uh, yeah, and I, I just uh, and I also had the advantage of uh, the football season so long now that I ran into some of my old baseball writer friends there for spring training. So, um, uh, we were able to uh, rekindle some uh, some old baseball, uh, you know, drinking moments uh, a few of those nights. So yeah, so that was. I, I, I laid a little more, a little low, low for me uh, this year. I'm getting, I'm getting too old for that. Huh. And on that, he just exited. Man, I'm out. On that note, he literally finished his answer See and ya. then logged off. There's a beer waiting for me. I'm out. It could have been more perfect. Well, money. Thanks to Jeff Miller. Thanks yep. to you, man. We'll we'll do it again next week with another guest. Exactly right. All right, for money, I'm Chris. This has been Chargers Weekly, presented by Microsoft Surface.